Dwayne, can you just shift your chair just a tiny bit? Sure. Oh, perfect. Why don't we take it from where Wayne was talking about the shift? This shift, this movement from the morning to the afternoon of your life, generally it's preceded by what we call a quantum moment. It was almost as if um, some kind of force had, had taken over, and I just, I was just amazed by it. That experience that I had, not only did it get me off of alcohol, it probably saved my life. You don't believe that. It sounds like more sitting around until some sort of epiphany comes to you. I'm pregnant. We had a prenup, an agreement. You signed it. No kids. I know, and I changed my mind, OK? People can change. Well, you know what? I didn't change my mind. Well, what are you going to do about it? Divorce me because I'm pregnant? I might. As a matter of fact, I'm definitely divorced. I hate you! When you showed up here in this world, you showed up here from a tiny little drop of human protoplasm, a speck, if you will. And everything that was in that little speck that became you, everything that you needed was in that tiny little speck. Why does it have to be so hard? One minute I have the, the funding to make my movie, the next I know. Can't get the money without the talent, can't get the talent without the money. Seriously thinking, career change. That's a good sign. How could you ignore what's right in front of you? Busy doing other things. You should understand that. There's a place deep within us that wants to feel fulfilled. That wants to know that my life has made a difference. That I've left this place, this planet that I've lived on, better than when I arrived. That someone's life has been profoundly touched because of my existence. We all want that. It's not about age or about finding yourself. Wherever you are, at whatever age, you're only a thought away from changing your life. Thoroughly unprepared, we take the step into the afternoon of life. Worse still, we take this step with the false presupposition that our truths and our ideals will serve us as hitherto. But we cannot live the afternoon of life according to the program of life's morning. For what was great in the morning will be little at evening. And what in the morning was true, at evening will have become a lie.
Go ahead, can I get some uh, cream? Boarded the dog, car payment, called the neighbors. Hey, Jack. Jack? Jack, I need you to turn off the video game and come downstairs and have breakfast. We're going to leave in a little bit. Let me, let me just finish the summer. Okay, fine, but then we're unplugged all weekend. Got it? I don't even know what that means, unplugged. It's a very sad commentary on our life. Ah! Hey, sweetie. Time to get up, sweetheart. Hmm. Hmm. Is it tomorrow? It is tomorrow. It is. And we're going to go on vacation. And we're going to have so much fun. But we got to miss the traffic, so let's get going. Got to get up, monkey. Okay, mm off you go. You're overreacting, Larry. I don't know what they can do. They can do a lot of damage to your image, Chad. Now listen, you have a brand to protect. More development can't afford lawsuits from environmental groups. This just isn't the right climate for that kind of stuff. What are you suggesting? I suggest you decide on some sort of compromise or we'll be tied up in court and you won't be able to start this project at all. You know, why didn't this come up when we did the impact report? I mean, for God's sake, we're talking about a tree. No, it's more than a tree. Chad, your pre-sales are already dropping, and now you're giving off the appearance of being insensitive. I am insensitive. It's a tree. You're paying me a lot of money for you advice that you're not Larry, we'll to. talk about this later. No, wait, you, wait a minute, you're, Chad. You're charging Chad, me by please, the minute. I'm on. hanging up now. No, don't act. What was that about? <sighs> I'm 80% done with this subdivision. Why don't you just not build near the tree? Then I lose money, and you don't get your bonus. Not reconfiguring an entire section of it because of a tree. Never mind then. Have you made a decision about the board meeting this weekend in Monterey? Wait, what is this about? The House of Hope and Promise. Ugh, next time someone asks me to be on one of these boards, shoot me. Hugh Johnson is on it, remember? I went to great lengths to get them to ask you to be on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Hugh Johnson's on the board, I'd better be on the board. In case you've forgotten, the House of Hope rehabilitates homeless families. I have put all of the information in this file for you. You can catch up on their mission in the car on the way there. I know what their mission is. It's to give handouts to people who can't handle things themselves. You know what? I never got a handout, and I managed okay. I will call your publicist and get them to say something about your philanthropic work. Hey, actually, that's a good idea. That'll deflect from the whole tree issue. Always thinking. Cottage so. Hello? You gotta get a new van, bro. Yeah, what happened? Yeah. Well, it's kind of hard to hear you. The, the reception's shoddy up here. What do you mean they're reconsidering? You're kidding, right? Well, you're my agent. You're too violent? What does that even mean? You're, I don't make slasher films, I make art. You gotta convince them of that. You got. Do they even know the talent we have on this? Well, I, I, you got to find a way to, to, to get them. To, to, 
Look, he shook my hand. He looked me right in the eye, and he said, he said, this is a go project. I want to do your film. Yes. Because if the money doesn't come through, I'll have to scramble to get another investor. I thought this was a sure thing. Excuse me, coming through. You want to make me happy? Get the money from my film. That would make me happy. I got to go. I'm on the Wayne Dyer thing. Hey, bye. Wow, damn. Is there anything we could do? You got about five million? If I did, would I be here? Then I don't think you can help me. Cheer up, David. It's a quick job. It's quick. It's quick and fun. It's 6.30 in the morning, Sarah. Right. It's not going to be fun. It's just a job. Nothing, Archie. We'll get them their footage, and then we're out of here. Wayne! Good morning, David. How, How are, are you? you? I'm great. How I hope this it? isn't too early for you. Oh, no, I've been up for hours. Good, yeah. good. This is Rob, our cameraman. We're very hey, lucky Rob. to have yeah, him. Nice to meet you. Ron does sound. Hey, Ron, nice to meet you. And this is uh, Sarah, my Sarah. production coordinator. Hi, She's Pleasure. very resourceful. Great. If you need anything, just ask her. Got it. So if you're amenable, I thought we'd head down to the social hall right. area and then set up down there. Let's do it. I'm ready. I've been ready for hours. Yeah. yeah. Oh, let's grab do your cape. Let's go. Super. After do it. you, John. All right. All right. How'd you sleep? I slept great. Oh, is there I'm anything? About this. Uh, they, they, is there any expectation I should know about? I have no expectations. I'm totally in your hands. Whatever you want to do. I'm, oh, I'm, I feel okay. sorry for you, Doctor Dyer. You're sorry you said that. I'm just gonna blot you a little bit there. You got a little shine. Okay. You can't go wrong at this place. Isn't that beautiful? It is gorgeous here. I'm sort of allergic to nature myself. Oh, I just love it. I'm so thrilled to be here. He looks good. He went less trees, more trees. How's that looking? Sure, that's fine. You know anything about the history of this place? Have you looked into it? Not really. We just go where they send us, you know? The guy who runs this is a fascinating guy. Uh, he was telling me about the history of it. No, I can't hear him. really a magical place. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's Can you fine. say that again? I'm sorry. It's a magical, magical place. I got him, I got him. Back in 1913, Julia Morgan, she was an architect, oh, right. and she designed this entire place. They set it up as a conference center for the Western Division of the YWCA, mm -hmm. and they would hold all of their meetings here. And the name of the place, it's called a Silomar. You know, who knows what a Silomar is? And I was asking him, he said, well, a, a Silo or a Cilio means uh, refuge, and Mar means sea. It if, was if we go, we can start. That's interesting. Hear that, David? I it heard together. it, yeah. This is a refuge by the sea, and it's just, it's just stunning. It's just so beautiful. I'm so That's excited great. to be here. Wayne, just so you know, tomorrow and the next day, we'll just ask you uh, questions, and you go ahead and answer, and then we'll move locations and do more of the same. And I'll also be shooting some B-roll over the next couple of days. What again? B? B-roll? B-roll. Like, uh, like walk like and bees, talk. The bees? You're shooting exercise. the bees that are here? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, it's, it's your vision. I'm, I'm, I'm open to anything. I'm, whatever you see, I'm, I'm happy to go along with it. Well, I'm more of a technician on this one. Really? Well, you know what? You might find yourself learning something. Maybe. Well, I'm open to it. Great. Uh, let's go ahead and roll camera. We're speeding. Sounds good. All right, Sarah, would you be kind enough to slate it? I would love to. You're going to slate me? I'm going to slate you. All right. Dr. Dyer, interview one. Okay, Wayne, you came up here to, to write your latest book. Can you tell us a little bit about what you came up to write about? Yeah, I'd be happy to. One of the things that has intrigued me over the years is so many people coming up when I talk about purpose and finding, finding meaning in their life is uh, what is my purpose? How do I find it? It always seems to be eluding me. I can't seem to get there. I've always felt that uh, the real purpose of life is, is just to be happy, to enjoy your life to get to a place where you're not always trying to get someplace else. So many people spend their lives striving, trying to be someplace that they're not. They never get to arrive. One of the ways to understand about how to find your purpose in your life is to return to nature, to find your own nature. I wrote a book a few years back called Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life, which was based upon the ancient teachings of Lao Tzu in a book called The Tao Te Ching. Lao Tzu reminds us that all being originates in non-being. Jesus put it this way in the New Testament, it's the spirit that gives life. That you didn't really come from your parents. You're, you really, all of us came from this place called spirit. And when you showed up here in this world, you showed up here from a tiny little drop of human protoplasm, a speck, if you will. And everything that was in that little speck that became you, Everything that you needed was in that tiny little speck. One of the most important metaphors that I ever used is that the first nine months of your life, from the moment of your conception until the moment of your birth, everything was being handled for you. There was nothing for you to do. 
you don't get consumed with the color your eyes are going to be or what your body is going to look like. It's all taken care of for you. You just surrender. I call it a future pull. And it's pulling. It's pulling you in the direction of whatever it is that you are supposed to be. And to me, it's not too great a stretch to say if everything you needed for the physical journey was already handled in there, then why not everything for the rest of the journey as well? All of your purpose, it's in there. All of what you, your personality, it's in there. Everything that you are to be, not just the physical you, but everything, if you just let go and allow. And so we're born. And we look at this beautiful little creature as parents. I have eight children. I've seen it happen many times. And you look at this beautiful little child and you look at it and you say, great work, God. Great work. Couldn't be any better. We'll take over from here. <laughs> And then we're surrounded by all these people, our family, our culture, wherever we go. And we begin to be told that uh, we can't really trust in, in who we are. We have to trust in something outside of ourselves. So we're on a journey towards ambition. Once you begin to say, we'll take over from here, you introduce something, you just take this perfection and you just edge out the creator. You edge God out. E G O, ego. This ego is the part of us that starts to tell us who you are is not this perfect divine creation, this piece of God that you came from. It doesn't say that. It says who you are is what you have. It begins with things like our toys, and then our bank accounts, and then the possessions that we have. Before you know it, we begin to identify ourselves on the basis of our possessions. We begin to take on a set of beliefs about the more that I have, the more valuable I am as a person. And so we spend our lives taking these young children and immersing them in a culture that emphasizes more. It becomes almost a mantra of the ego. You have to have more. And the more you have, the more you are aware of how much other people are trying to take it away from you. The more you get consumed with how do I protect it and how do I make more of what I have. The dilemma here is that if you are what you have and things go away, then who you are also goes away in the process. Going somewhere? Yeah, I thought I'd come with you. Why? Why not? Because this is a work thing. I'll be in meetings all day tomorrow. I'll have nothing to do. Doesn't matter if you're busy. I'll go shopping or something. I'll be fine. Hi. Sorry, we won't be needing you after all. Thanks, you can go. What are you doing? Oh, come on, it'll be a beautiful drive. Which car should we take? You are not coming, and I do not want to drive. I want to be driven because I have work to do. Okay, well then I'll drive. Let's take the Porsche. Denise, the place I'm going, it's not the kind of place you're used to. It's rustic. I think I can handle it, Chad. I know how to rough it. You know, I don't understand the sudden desire to spend time together. I just want to get away. Would you prefer I got my own room? Okay, what's wrong with you? Maybe I'm interrupting someone. Oh, come on. Are you meeting someone else? Of there? course not. Look, I don't even want to go to this thing. Well, then, all the more reason I should go with you. You're not going to fit all those bags in the Porsche. <sighs> Why don't you help me try? The second aspect of the ego is this idea that I am not only what I have, but I am what I do as well. We are... You gonna get that? No. No, please. Go ahead. That's oh, all right. No well, we're stopped here. Do you want anything, Dr. Dow? You want water or anything? No, no, I'm fine. Still rolling, guys. We're cutting. What? Oh, keep rolling. Keep rolling. Please. So, second component of this ego is the idea that not only is who I am what I have, but it's what I do. And what I do becomes this thing called achievement. And in this whole world of believing that I am what I do, we become consumed with this whole idea of my success, my value, my worth as a human being is based upon how much I accomplish. So I have to make more money. I have to get a promotion. 
I have to compete with everybody else who's trying to get what I have. We are taught this over and over and over again. All of our young people are taught this when they go out into athletics. The most important thing you can do is be number one, and you say, we're number one, we're better than everybody else. And we constantly find ourselves in this competitive notion again of, of believing that our world is one in which we have to compete. That's what the ego says. Now the third aspect of this is the idea that I am what other people think of me. That is, I am my reputation. Particularly, this is relevant for young people who are taught that you have to dress the way other people think. And if other people don't like you, then there's something wrong with you. If you're consumed with that, then you're going to be something different every time you turn around. Now this is particularly relevant with women, especially in relationship to the family. Women are often taught in our culture and our society that the only way that you can fulfill yourself is by how you relate to your family, to yourself as a daughter, to yourself as a mother, to yourself as a grandmother. And while these are very important and creative aspects of every woman's life, if, if that's the choice that they make, it's not necessarily the only thing. And many women feel that deep within them that they have a calling to accomplish something great, to make a contribution. And oftentimes we'll put it aside. So what I encourage women to think is don't ignore that calling inside of you. Don't ignore the part of you that says you came here to create something powerful and you have just as much of an influence in doing that, just as much of a right to do that as anyone else does. Sure, I saw that one too. I wonder if I can get the whole collection on DVD? I think that might be a possibility. You know what my favorite episode is? I don't. Kick the can. Now that is a good one. You know, when all the old people become young again. Yes, yes, heartbreaking, isn't it? You know, I, 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 the other episode I like is the one where... You know what, I'd like to uh, check in. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, oh I'm sorry. sorry. I, are, you, are you with the wedding? Uh, no. <laughs> There's a wedding? People actually get married here? Yeah, all the time. I'm not criticizing it. I think it's charming. Chad Moore. More development? Yes. Ethan Lipton. I used to work for your company a few oh, years ago. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, in accounting. Yeah, sure. Darling, we'll talk later, okay? Okay, okay. Oh, be sure to tell the guys to show up on time tomorrow night at the rehearsal dinner. This whole weekend is going to be a continuous celebration of love. Well, I do like love. <laughs> well, that's why I'm in this business. <laughs> Bye. Are you getting married? Ah, uh, no, I'm with the band. Oh, well, have a fun weekend of love. <laughs> you guys, too. Do you remember that guy? Not at all. Hi there. Hey. Let's see, I'm checking in. Uh, the house of something? Promise and hope. Ah, uh, promise of Chad Moore. I'm on the board. Welcome to Asilomar, Mr. Moore. We have you in North or Long Views. If you go out the door and yeah, to your left... My wife has joined me unexpectedly, so could we get one of the larger rooms? You don't have to tell him that. Well, they weren't expecting you. You were unexpected. One of the nicer rooms would be wonderful. Thank you. I'm not used to camping. <laughs> camping. That's funny, thing. Let me see what I can do for you. There's so much stuff we can do. Oh, that'd be cool. Where, where that. are the kids? Huh? Oh. Oh. Uh, Ethan. Ah, whoa. Jack, Jack, Ethan, Jack, come Jack. over here. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Hey, come on. Get over here. Come here, troopers. All right. Take you and your mom. <laughs> Stay on my toes. Yeah, and uh, also something away from all the noise would be nice. I do have a room on the first floor in the lodge building. Yeah, no, uh, uh, something higher. higher. Uh, of course, Mr. Moore. Do you have a room on the second floor? Higher than that, please. I'm afraid that's about as high as we go here. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> what a waste of real estate. I think you'll like this room. It has a balcony. All right. If you say so. Give me a second. Give that to your mother. Give that to your mother. You heard her. Hand it over. I said we were going to be in fun this whole weekend. Did you guys just want to go home? No, we're not going to go home. It's no fun. Come here. Stay with me. Here, jump on my feet. Jump on my okay. feet. Okay. Ah. There's no way we can have all these meetings with these kids running around and screaming. Have a great stay. Look, I don't need to be having this conversation right now. I don't have time for this. I can't deal with this right now. I, it's not... We move into then the later parts of the ego, which talks about something called separation. And the ego has a very strong belief system that who I am is separate from everybody else. And then another component of the ego teaches us that I'm also separate from everything that's missing in my life, from all the things that I'd like to have. And then finally, 
the ego teaches us the most egregious error of all. It teaches us that we are separate from God. And one of the simple constructs that you learn in the afternoon of your life when you shift into the meaning phase of your life is to realize that you came from a source. We can call it God, we can call it Tao, it doesn't matter what we call it. And that this source is everywhere. There's no place that it is not. It must be because it creates everything. Everything comes from this source. Then it must be in me. If there's no place that it's not, it must be in me. And if it must be in me, it must also be in whatever it is that I feel to be missing from my life. If you know that, then in some way, everything that's missing from your life that you would like to have, you're already connected to it in spirit. And all you have to do is figure out a way to align yourself with that and have a knowing that you're already connected to it. You just have to bring it on its way in the that's way that you intense. think and process. What was that out loud? Yeah, you just said that out loud. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. okay. Sorry, it is sorry. intense. Okay. <laughs> There's no question about it. It's okay. very intense. Please continue. Okay. I was saying that as we move into the afternoon of our life, we take the same ego constructs that we learned in the morning of our life, which is all about competition, winning, being better than everybody else, and we try to apply these same constructs to the afternoon of our life. And what happens is we end up living a lie for what was true in the morning, in the evening, has become a lie. The problem is we don't really know how to move into the meaning phase of our life. This is when we have to learn to go back to those first nine months from the moment of our conception until the moment of our birth. Lao Tzu speaks about this in the Tao Te Ching. Let yourself be lived by it. He says that the Tao does nothing. It's leaving nothing undone. This is where we have to get to a place where we can surrender and have a knowing that we're not alone and that we're going to be guided, and that we have a nature, and that we can trust in this nature. It's not something that we have to always be struggling with. It's not something we have to be in charge of. Literally, think about it. Let yourself be lived by it, rather than you taking over. But as we move into the meaning phase of our life, what's happening is we begin to think about fulfilling a dharma, fulfilling a destiny, fulfilling something inside of us, a calling that only we can feel inside of us. No one else can tell you what that is, but if you feel it and you know it, winning and being ahead of other people takes a back seat to feeling fulfilled and living your life on purpose. I'm coming to get you. No! Ethan! Don't throw sand! <laughs> Anything to drink? Juice box? Sure. I'm gonna go back and get some more sunscreen. Really? We got clouds. No, they can still get burned. Okay. You gonna walk back? Yeah, I'll be fast. Well, we can wrap it up here. No, no, look at them. They're having so much fun. I don't wanna drag them away. I'll be right back. Okay. You got some great stuff. Well, I think it was a good start. I think it really was. I think uh, I think you're going to see this thing come together in some unexpected ways. You're going to be surprised. You really are. Directors don't like surprises. Uh, well, you're in for some. <laughs> great. I'll see you in the morning. I look forward to it. Thanks for everything. It was great. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you Thanks for everything. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. You see you later. Drive. Yep. Okay. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Looks like they're reaching for each other. Sorry? Well, the, the trees, it looks just like they're reaching for each other. Yeah, you're right, it does.
a whole place. It's like a different painting every day. You know, you're very fortunate to work here. <laughs> yeah, Hey. You want a lollipop? Excuse me? It's root beer. <laughs> do you like root beer? Actually, I do. It's root beer, but with a little bit of liquid. Thank you. Hmm. I like it. I like everything about this place. Like what? What do you like about it? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's so beautiful. I, I, don't, I, I can't describe it. In words, yeah. I guess so. I mean, it, 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 words versus images. Images? Pictures. No, don't do that either. I used to. When I was in college. I used to drive down to the beach and I'd, I'd sketch for hours. Oh well, doesn't matter anyway. Oh well. What? We got cold. You eating a lollipop? I am. You doing any candy for the kids? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I. Oh. oh that's alright. Let's go back on, buddy. Let's go. Yeah. All right. It's okay. Here. You want a I don't get it, to be honest with you. That really doesn't surprise any of us, David. Seriously, if I didn't have ambition, nothing we got done. Um, is that supposed to be a comment about us? Have a napkin, please. You know what I mean. Like we're supposed to sit around and, and wait for things to happen to us magically? There's nothing wrong with a little magic in life. I can't trust magic. What I can trust is my own will to get things done. That's my main problem with what Dr. Dyer is saying. Okay, he's right there. You want to keep it down? He didn't hear me. Dr. Dyer? You want to oh, come join us? Sure, I'd love to. How are you guys doing? Great. Good. Chicken's great. Mmm, good, good. So, Dr. Dyer. Yes. Um, we were all just discussing in right. the first interview and mm -hmm. all those things you said. And basically, David thinks that it's all BS. What? Mm -hmm. David? BS? I, 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 really? I, I don't think mm -hmm. all of it is. I mean, we're, I'm, in, I'm entitled to my own opinion, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You are entitled to your opinion, and I respect it. And you know, David, you don't have to get this all at once. You know, just get a little bit at a time. That's, that's all it takes. You know, you just start practicing it. Eventually, it becomes a way of life, and you start living from a different perspective. I'm not really a spiritual person. I'm too busy. Yeah, spirituality is kind of like a luxury. Mm. That is true. I find it hard to find time to meditate. Let me ask you this. Do you think that you're uh, an inspired person? Do you live an inspired life? Do you feel inspired? Um, I... I have no idea. Really? Well, let's let's take an example. Let's supposing I had a an apple pie that we had just made, and out of this apple pie we take one slice. We take this, we take the rest of the pie, put it over here, and I take this slice and I give it to someone. Let's say I gave it to you, Ron, and I say, Ron, what is this? Um, that's an ap apple pie. How do you know that? How do you know it's an apple pie? Because it came from an apple pie. So. <laughs> Well, you laugh, but I mean, the truth is that's a very profound statement that you just made, that everything in the universe must be like what it came from. You take an acorn and you'll never get a rose bush out of it. You look at yourself and you ask yourself the question, where did I come from? Who am I and what am I like? You know, instead of making our choices out of the place that we really are, our authentic self, we're making them out of the ego. And every time we make choices out of the ego, all kinds of things begin to happen to us that take us away from finding meaning so in our lives. So how do you know if you're making a choice from your, your higher self? You gauge everything on the basis of how you feel. Are you stressed out? Are you anxious? Are you fearful? Are you angry? Do you feel good about yourself? Do you feel like you're on purpose? Do you feel like your life has any meaning? When you're operating out of the only part of yourself that is authentic, 
bliss is your response. But what about the upside of ambition? I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a filmmaker, and, and if, if I didn't... Doesn't ego serve me? I mean, if I was going with the flow, I had to, I'd never get a movie made. That's a conclusion that you come to because you think out of the ego. You know, the fact is that uh, you might even be able to make much greater films if you came out of a, of, a, of a higher place. Imagine yourself as being able to live and work and do everything that you do from this place that... Well, it's called Dharma. What's Dharma? Dharma is a spiritual principle that implies there is a purpose to our lives. Like uh, an otter has a Dharma, a bird has a Dharma. Everything has a purpose. And when you find yourself living from that purpose, you're, you, you have found your Dharma. Your Dharma is something that you're, you, know, you, you will be living by. And rather than constantly using the ego, you will begin to say, this is what I'm here for. It's like, I call it a calling. It's like an inner calling. How do you know what your uh, Dharma is? Like, what if you can't even find your Dharma? Yeah, I can't even find a date, let alone my Dharma. Well, your, your, your Dharma isn't anything you're ever going to find. Your Dharma is something that you're always connected to. It is, uh, it is your divine purpose. It is something that you Hello. are uh, aligned with throughout your entire Hello. life. The ego has kept us excuse, away from excuse it. Excuse me, That's I have to take this. This is what I'm well, talking okay. about. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. How does this help me find a date exactly? You don't need to find a date. If you live what I'm talking about, you'll understand that everything will be perfect and everyone that comes into your life will come in on time perfectly. You're a divine creation of God. You're a spiritual being. You don't need anyone else to confirm that. I love that. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Dr. Oh, Dyer oh, said it was. It is true. <laughs> You know, I, I don't want you to think that I don't appreciate what you're saying. I do. I, I, not that you would necessarily be concerned with what I'm saying, because that's the ego telling you what to think, right? So you, so you were listening? Yeah, I'm listening. I just think it's good to have a plan. Well, what's your plan? To be a successful filmmaker. To make a name for myself. To make money. To have a good relationship. So you're talking here about prosperity. You're talking about abundance. You're talking about happiness. I haven't have any problem with that. I've, I've been attracting abundance and prosperity into my life forever. I think it's, I think it's actually quite, quite easy to do. I really believe in it. For you? Well, you know, the, the problem, what you're talking about here, is the ego. The ego and, the, and, and your attachments. You know, you become attached to... Uh, you know, how much money you're making and uh, how well your film is doing and uh, is, is everything working the way, I, you know, I've been told that it should work. Uh, when you become attached to things and they go away, you then lose who you are. But it feels so much like survival. We're not talking about survival here. We're talking about a shift. A shift away from the, the morning of your life and, and having to do everything for uh, external reasons and moving into a, into a higher place in your life. Why don't we start with that tomorrow? How to make this shift? It's a good idea. You know, I tell my audiences all the time that uh, if this is something new to you and you've never heard it before, there's a shift probably heading your way as well. Ha! Yeah. <laughs> That's all I need. That well, could happen. When great thinkers talk about union with God, there's this theme that comes through. It's about being in silence. When everyone else is asleep and there are no distractions, when you feel yourself alone with Source, this is the time when you are closest to Source. Being alone with Source is not just about feeling good, it's about a new awareness of my own divinity and what it's capable of achieving. It's all about returning back to the place that you came from. T.S. Eliot has a great quote, we shall not cease from exploration. 
and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. I got a cut. Wayne, hold there for a minute. Hold there, Wayne, for a second. What is it? It's a bad angle. I got to be lower. How long? Five minutes. Wayne, take five. Just hang there. We're readjusting the shot. Absolutely. No problem. You want some water, Dr. Dyer? No, thanks. I have an ocean here. Hi, you've reached the office of Alex Chase at ICM. Please leave a message for Alex or Jason at the tone. Thanks. Alex, it's David. Call me back when you get this. I'm, I'm getting a little antsy. I, I think we should have heard by now. What did the executive say? That, do you know anything? And, and why haven't I had a meeting yet? See the difference? Yeah. Call me back. I'd appreciate it. Ooh. Wayne Dyer interviews day two. Rolling. Okay, we'll start with the transition from ambition to meaning. Great, it's a good idea. I can give you an example from my own life. It might be helpful. I, when I first started writing, I was very blessed to be uh, considered, quote, successful. My motivation very often became um, how much money was I going to make on this book? What was my next contract going to look like? Um, how many weeks did it appear on the New York Times bestseller list? What position was it? Um, did you get on the Tonight Show? Did you get on the Donahue Show? Hold on, I'm confused. Yeah? Yeah, if you were a success, who cares what was motivating you? Well, I guess you begin to change your definition of uh, what it is that constitutes success. I mean, success uh, can be identified in those terms, and, uh, and there are other ways to look at it as well. But there's people listening to you. I mean, where would you be if you didn't initiated. I mean, it got you started, right? I'm sorry to interrupt. Are we switching to a Q&A format? I, I'm just, I'm just curious. Sorry. No, that's okay. It's a very normal question. It's a, it's a very common concern that people have. For myself, we talked about my writing, David, and yes, by all means it was successful, but there was a part of me, inside of me, that said, there's, uh, there's something more for me. I was writing books about psychology. Your, your erroneous sounds, pulling your own strings, the sky's the limit. All of them were doing well. All of them were bestsellers. It was all. But inside of me, I was shifting. There was a calling to something else, and I could see the shift taking place in my life. And the shift was, uh, it was more in the direction of spirituality. It was more in the direction of higher consciousness. I began to become excited and, and, uh, and thrilled by, by reading people like Krishnamurti, by reading people like Muktananda. And I remember going to my agent and I said, I want to write a book about how to take some of these great spiritual ideas. He said, no, 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 no. You're going to write a book about sex. He said, it's, this is going to sell. This is like uh, Dr. Ruth has got one, but you're way better than Dr. Ruth. You know, and he's going on and on. And, I, and he said, and then I've got a second book for you and we're going to do a two book deal. And you're going to write a book about how to make money. You know, Wayne Dyer's approach to making money. And I'd say, Artie, I said, I, that, that's, I, I can't do that. And I said, I, I have to write about it. He said, no, nobody's going to buy this stuff. He said, this is just, he said, that's just for, that's the airy-fairy stuff. That's out there. That's all that new agey stuff. He said, you don't want to, I said, but I have to write that. That's what I'm living. That's what I'm feeling. It's so exciting. And I remember submitting the proposal to him, and uh, he said, all right, I'll send it in. And they reluctantly, they didn't give me much of an advance at all because they didn't even believe in it. But off I went. There was a strong inner kind of feeling that I had something greater to give. I had something that I had to do that was beyond just going through the motions, just doing what I had already mastered, what I knew how to do. I remember when I made the shift, even though there was a little bit of fear, I remember feeling probably the freest that I'd, that I'd felt ever in my life. I wasn't motivated by whether people are going to buy it, how much money I'm going to make, whether people are going to put me on a bestseller list. Those became external kind of factors. Those became things that started to chase me rather than me chasing it. Basically, I think, David, what I'm trying to say to you is that, that you get to a place in your life where you start to be guided by something that's larger than yourself. Just stay aligned with what you're here for and stay in harmony with spirit, with God, with source. Stay there. And as you stay there, Hello, the meaning phase of your life yeah. begins to take over. Talk. And once you cross over into the afternoon of your life, it's impossible to go back. Wait, 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 Monday? You can't keep telling me Monday. If it was coming through, you would come through like, like five Mondays ago. Well, we can take a pause no, here for a second. you are not telling me this right now. What do you mean? 
They're replacing me? You don't know what to tell me? This movie meant everything to me. This, I, I bought them this movie! It's my movie! This movie meant everything to me! Damn it! Okay, this would be a great place to break. Is right. he okay, you think? Is he? I think he's gonna be fine. Let's just call it lunch. Okay. Everybody get something to eat, okay? And then, um, see you guys. Lunch is one half hour. If anybody is interested in the Ryan County Project, please see. Hey, you up for a late game of golf? Oh, absolutely. Okay, I'll reserve it. Thanks. You know how long this meeting's going to last after lunch? I don't really know. I think they're saving some of the big items until the end. Like what? Well, they're a million down in the San Francisco project. The contractor underbid, now they're over budget. Oh, you know what? Listen, you can catch me up on all that stuff this afternoon when we play golf. You're not coming back? Oh, no, I am. I'm going to try. I just uh, got a lot of work to do. See you later. Okay. Good book? Not bad. I'm sort of a slow reader, but it's being patient with me. <laughs> you said you worked for my husband? A long time ago. I don't think he remembers me. Oh, I think he remembers you. Well, he let a bunch of us go all at once, because, you know, he needed to scale back. Sorry about that. Hey, it's okay, truly. It's one of the best things that ever happened to me. I needed to try some different things, pursue some other avenues. Like your music? Like my music? Yeah. Well, it sounds like your story has a happy ending. Not yet, I hope. Uh, no. Don't rush me now. No, that's not what I meant. I meant you uh, seem happy. Well, hey, you know what? You and Chad ought to come to this party that we're playing at tonight. Oh, thanks anyway. Yeah, come on. It's supposed to be a continuous celebration of love. Isn't that what she called it? Oh, yes. I, I think she did. Okay, so you guys have to be there to help us continuously oh, celebrate. I can't crash a party. I just invited you. You can't invite us. Too late. Sorry. Happened. <laughs> uh, no. Thanks, though. Um, I'll see you around. Okay. Wear something comfortable. Denise. Denise. Hey, slow down. Stop! Oh, hi. Why didn't you stop? I didn't see you there. Where are you going? Uh, I was going into town. I thought you were in meetings all day. I was. But, uh, I'm bored. Yeah, well, if Hugh Johnson can do it, you can do it. I'm not cut out for this non-profit thing. So. Oh, Chad, you just gotta fake it. No, I'm coming with you. What? I said I'm coming into town with you. Honey, I love you, but I don't enjoy shopping with you. I need some me time. I thought we were supposed to spend time together. Right? Look, Denise, I'm not kidding. I cannot take another meeting. I'm coming with you. Whatever. Hey! Guys, stop it! Take it over there or you're gonna lose the water guns. Oh, oh they got you all wet. Oh, it's no big deal. It's just water. Water, water is soft. Don't, don't, don't give it another thought. It's great. I am so sorry. Don't be sorry. I've got eight kids of my own. I've got grandchildren. Um, you know, these things happen. Uh, things get messy once in a while. It's fun. Oh, thank you. That makes me feel a little bit better. I always see it as an opportunity to sort of practice what I call non-interference. Oh, I wish I could do that. Oh, you can. Of course you can. Really? I mean, I'm their mother. Isn't that a little irresponsible? I don't see it as irresponsible at all. I think parenting is not about uh, having children lean on you. It's about making leaning unnecessary. Yeah, they've got a compass. Let them follow their own compass. Hmm. What would I do with myself if I wasn't interfering? Oh, I don't know. Do you ever think about music or art or something like that? How'd you know? 
No what? Nothing. Uh, thank you. It was re really, really nice talking to you. Oh, you too. God bless you. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste. All right, guys, come on. Time for lunch. I don't want to yeah. eat. Me either. Yeah, before the ants eat us. Uh, just come and eat when you're hungry. <laughs> return that dress. One you just bought? The red one. I waited 45 minutes for you to decide if you were going to buy that. I don't think I like it. Then why'd you buy it? Actually, I, I think I already have it. It took you an hour to buy a dress that you already have. This is exactly why you shouldn't come shopping with me. Well, I've got an idea. How about if we just not talk to each other at all? Jesus, Chad. I, sh I really should have come alone. I've got a lot on my mind. You've got a lot on your mind. What could you possibly have on your mind? All right. I wasn't going to tell you this until tonight, but... What? This weekend is a, a write-off for you, right? Because you're on the board of that charity. Right. You're about to have another write-off. What's that supposed to mean? Ugh, God, I'm trying to put this in a way you can relate to. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not relating. I'm pregnant. What? You're joking. No, I'm not joking. I don't want kids. I know, I know. I didn't either, but this just happened and I thought... I don't know, maybe it's time for change, you know, that we should experience this thing that everyone says is so wonderful. You know, maybe, maybe it's time to stop being so selfish and start thinking about I something other than... I want to be selfish. I like being selfish. I like our lives. We come and go and we want. We're happy. Oh, you think we're happy, Chad? I, I, I don't know if we're happy. I mean, God, you're, you're always at work. We're, we're, we never see I'm each other anymore. I'm always at work anymore. because I need to buy you the things that you want, Denise. Cars, clothes, houses, everything you want. But still, it's not enough to make you happy. Please, keep it down. I want this baby. I think it could be the most wonderful thing we could do with our lives. Come on, I get what this is about. This is about you feeling like you haven't done anything in your life. So you think you need a baby to feel validated. Well, you know what? I don't. I've worked my way up from nothing, and I will not sacrifice our lifestyle so that you can indulge in yet another distraction. Wow. A baby is not a pair of shoes, Denise. I know that, Chad. You are so cruel, and you're so mean. God, you, you used to be fun. I, what is it? What's happened? You planned this, didn't you? It was an accident. Sir, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Please. It can happen. How could you do this? How could you do this? Thank you so much. Thank you for making this the, the tender, precious moment that everyone has Tender, precious about. moment? We don't have tender, precious no, moments. We you don't. know what we did have? We had a prenup, an agreement. You signed it. No kids. I know, and I changed my mind, okay? People can change. Well, you know what? I didn't change my mind. Well, what are you going to do about it? Divorce me because I'm pregnant? I might. As a matter of fact, I'm definitely divorcing you. Will you please shut up? I'm okay. definitely Fine. You. I don't care. Go ahead. I'm better off raising this baby without you. Good luck. You signed that prenup. You won't get much. I'll make sure of it. I hate you!
Sir. I'm fine. I still need I'm you. I'm fine. Sir, I am still going to have to ask you to leave. Oh, I'm leaving. Don't worry about paying. No, I am definitely paid for this meal. Please, sir, it's not necessary. Oh, she, she's got my wallet. Wallet! Hey! You took my wallet, you kleptomaniac! You left her in the room, you moron! I'm calling my lawyer. I'm calling my lawyer right oh, now. Oh, really? How are you going to do that without your precious phone? Hey, come back! Come back! Stay with the same frame size, right? Yeah, Thank you. yeah sure. Okay, guys. Ready? Okay. Rosing. Okay, Wayne, can you just shift your chair sure. just a tiny? Sure. Take, oh, perfect. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Okay, so we good? We are good. All right. David. We're rolling. David? Uh, David, why don't... Why don't we take it from where Wayne was talking about the shift? We can, can just continue from there. Sounds good to me. Okay, this, this shift, this movement from ambition to meaning, from the morning to the afternoon of your life, generally it's preceded by what we call a quantum moment. Sounds strange perhaps to use a term like that, but quantum moment really refers to uh, the, the characteristics of uh, what it is like when you have what Maslow called a peak experience. Uh, the first of these qualities, there's four of them. The first of them is, uh, is that it's very vivid. The second quality or characteristic of these quantum moments is that uh, it's a surprise. And the third characteristic of these quantum moments is that they are benevolent. They always feel good. The fourth and final quality is that it's enduring. That is, it isn't just something that comes and then goes and it's out the window. It lasts with you forever. For example, uh, I left drinking behind in my life uh, 21 years ago. And I couldn't even imagine that I could have given it up because I'd always had two or three beers every single day for the previous uh, 10, 15, 20 years. I couldn't even remember a day when I hadn't. And uh, I knew that I had to make that, that change. And it was 4.05 a.m. in the morning. I could remember the clock when it, when it turned. I woke up and there was like... It was like a breeze in the room, something that I'd, I'd never experienced before. The smell of roses. This was 21 years ago now. I can tell you what was, uh, what was hanging on the closet, the hook that I had there. On the mirror there, I had a little a cartoon that I had there. I can still see that thing exactly as if, it, as if it happened this morning. The vividness of this is something that I've never, ever been able to forget. I can remember how surprised I was at what was happening at that time. It was almost as if... Um, some kind of force had, had taken over, and I just, I was just amazed by it. So if you're lucky this happens to you? Uh, David, it has nothing to do with luck. It's like when the moment is right, when you are in a different state, in a different place in your life, uh, exactly what is supposed to happen will happen for you. The low points in your own life, these times when you think that nothing could go any worse, oftentimes are the things that we need to propel ourselves to a higher place. Let me give you an example. The night before that moment that I just described to you, I had taken my entire family, five children, and my wife, and we had all gone to this restaurant. And like I always did, every single time I went to a restaurant, I ordered not just one beer, but two. And that was so that uh, in case the waiter wasn't there when I wanted my second one, I would be able to have it. And the waiter said to me, oh, excuse me, sir. He said, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, uh, I can't serve you alcohol. And I said, why? He said, well, uh, last night one of our waiters served someone who was underage and we had our license suspended. I said, come on, we're getting out of here. And I made each one of my children get up, get back into the car, strapped into their car seats and so on. My wife, who God knows had so much to do and it was su such a hardship for her, but it didn't seem to matter to me at that time. 
because I wanted to have my beers, and I was making myself more important than everyone else. And we drove off and went to another restaurant. And I can remember thinking that night as I went to sleep how, how ashamed I was. My wife tried to talk to me a little bit about it, but I would have none of it. I was right, and that's just what the ego always makes you. It makes you right. <clears throat> and that night, that experience that I had at 4.05 a.m. the next day, not only did it get me off of alcohol, it probably saved my life. It, it transformed my life in so many different ways. And it was all because I was open to it. You don't believe that. It sounds like more sitting around until some sort of epiphany comes to you. Mm. It's not about waiting around. You know, in the Tao, one of the great lessons that I learned is that it teaches us how to be soft, how to be flexible how to not be always in control. One of the great teachings of the Tao says that uh, let yourself be lived by it. But you didn't do anything. That's the whole point. That's the place you want to get to where you just allow. In the recovery movement, it's called letting go and letting God. Allowing this source that is always flowing through each and every one of us to do and perform its magic. And that magic will always work in our best interest if we just surrender to it. If you could just stop interfering in your own life and just let yourself be done. If you can get to that place, nothing will be left undone. Everything that you need will be there for you. It's mysterious for most of us because we believe that we're the ones who have to do everything. Isn't it interesting that you had everything you needed in the first nine months? Why isn't that true for the next 90 years? Because we interfere.